Hi friends, it's Becky, and I am doing part one of a three-part series where I'm going to be making a necklace or project based on one of the characters from The Wizard of Oz, because this is using beads from The Wizard of Oz, Jesse James Beads Magical Mystery Bead Box. This was the bead box for September, um, which we got at the end of September, so we're using it all in October. So we're going to be putting all of these together. So I pulled out some beads and things in order to make a project here. Um, I'm going to be also doing another project based on Glinda, another project based on Elphaba. That's the uh, Wicked Witch of the West. But this one is our Dorothy one. So I grabbed some of the red beads. There weren't that many red beads in th this kit or in this box, but I grabbed them all. I've got some red hearts. We've got our gingham um, beads. I actually ruined one of the smaller ones when I was trying to glue some of this cup chain around the outside of it for um, for a uh, an earring. So we're not doing earrings. And I'm going to use this instead as part of my focal on a necklace. So we're going to do that with that because I absolutely ruined the other one. Um, just for future reference, y'all, if you're using something to remove glue, um, it might also remove the printing on these beads. So don't do that. Um, yeah. Uh, or just be really, really good with gluing so you don't have to remove the glue um, after you mess up. Or just don't mess up. Just don't mess up. That's, that's, that's it. It's just simple. Don't mess up. Anyway, back to what we're going to be doing. I grabbed most of the black beads. I grabbed these white AB frosted beads. I've got these blue beads here and our twister beads and just a couple of sparkly guys there. And then the crystal and black, like the, for black and white. Um, rondelle spacers to go between some of our things when we start stringing it. I'm going to be making a wire wrapped focal with you. That's going to be the first thing that we do. I'm going to be using a some 18 gauge wire to make a shoe shape and then I'm going to use some 24 gauge wire to wrap the cup chain onto the shoe shape for our um, ruby slippers. And then we'll add these to the top of it, and then we'll string the rest of these beads into a necklace. Um, now for stringing, I'm going to be using some white quartz wire. It is the Softflex medium beading wire. Um, for the stringing part, I've also got some 2x2 crypt tubes and a lobster clasp for closure. And then the tools that I'm using, I'm going to be using some round nose pliers, some chain nose pliers, some flush cutters, and then once I do crimping with my beading wire, I'm going to use my favorite way of doing crimps, and that is the magical crimper. So let me get these guys out of the way, and we will start with our wire wrapping and creating a uh, our focal. I'm just going to move tools here, but move these beads out of the way so that they are not um, screwing around with the focus on this. there because these will all get strung together. Um, let's do our part one. Now to make a shoe shape I am going to be doing a little bit of drawing and for me it doesn't need to be exactly a shoe shape as long as it's shoe shape-ish. So let's pull out a drawing pad and I don't want it to be a lot bigger than my biggest bead here so maybe from here to here. And that would be a good place for it to be. It does not need to be a giant, giant shoe. There we go. So let's start over here and just go along. This will be the bottom of the shoe. Let's have a heel here. And the heels on the ruby slippers were not that... Um, They were not that uh, that big. It wasn't like five inch heels or anything. All right, we're gonna go up to here on that part. And I'm just kind of sketching this in. Let's go up there. And there we go. 
we're going to have a little bit of a bend here, a curve here, and then this part is where I will add a little heartbeat, and then we'll have a loop up here. Now that's a big loop. You need a tiny loop for stringing between some beads. So there we go. A little loop like that. We'll use this rondelle. Alright, so that's the shape that I'm going to want my 18 gauge wire to take. You could do this with 20 gauge wire too probably. That would probably be just fine. What do you think? Does that look like a shoe shape? It feels shoey to me. So let's get our 18 gauge wire out here, and I think I'm going to need enough for these beads, enough for a loop, enough for that part, twice that. All right. Now, to straighten out your wire, you can use some nylon jaw pliers, or I'm just sort of bending it around my finger, and then bending it the opposite direction around my thumb. This helps get the um, the kinks out and it warms up the wire so it's easier to use. Alright. I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. Let me get a measurement for you. Looks like this is about 11 inches or 28 centimeters. And when I draw this out, I'm going to end up wanting to start out, let's start out here. Let's leave enough for a bit of a wrap right there. I'm going to lay this down on my drawing as I go and use my pliers and my fingers to help bend it so that it fits that shape. I'm going to scooch in just a little bit so we can see what I'm doing. I want this end to be the part that comes up towards that, so I'm going to be just going to bend this so I know that part's going to be doing wrapping. And then we're going to come down here to that part of the heel. It's a blocky heel. And yes, that is a good shape. And I'm going to need another bend here. Before I do that, though, I'm going to add a bend in my wire just by stroking it and pressing down with my finger so that when I get this other bend I won't have to do too much else. For that. Okay. So now I'm going to hold this down with my thumb, pull this down there, and then we're going to need a more gentle curve this way. We'll need this to be a little bit straighter. Go. That's matching pretty well. And then right here is where we're going to need a curve. Now, let me see what I have around here that I can maybe shape this around that will give me that same kind of a curve. All right. So let's. Where do I want that at? I want it to start right here. 
So I'm going to put this on there. I just was looking around my desk for something that would allow me to wrap it around there and get myself, I think I need a narrower curve than that. Do I have a different kind of pen that I can use? I'm bending just right here. <laughs> no, no, I want, I don't want it to be so bulbous. I'm just gonna straighten this part out above this curve. I'm going slow. Just doing little presses with this in that direction. There we go. That's a much better curve. That looks more like the toe of a shoe. And it looks like this is going to be bigger than I had originally drawn. That's going to be okay. All right. So this part, while it's poking up, I'm going to actually need it to go in the opposite direction. Down this way. Oh, oh, but I like that. That's nice. This is another part that I'm going to create a curve with my fingers. And have it go back that way. All right, and if you've got any like weird things right here, that's probably going to be easily covered up when we get to the point of wrapping our, there we go, perfect. All right, wrapping our cup chain around there. So right here where it is meeting this, I'm gonna just wrap this around twice. And I want this to stay mostly the shape that I've got it. So I'm going to clip this excess bit off. Tuck that in with my pliers. And grab my bench block because I'm going to just hammer this out to work harden it a little bit. So this will be just a little bit noisy. I hope that's okay. I'm going to use a hammer and my bench block and I'm just going to give it some taps. Um, and also a very important part to this, if you are my age, is whispering to yourself, stop hammer time. It's part of the process. My um, there we go. That's good. It looks like a shoe. Let's do a little bit of a bend here to keep that from slipping out. Slippers, no pun intended. And I'm going to go ahead and make the rest of this with this bead. Is this wire going to be too thick for this? It might be. Let's find out. Okay, so I am not going to be able to do that with this. But you know what I can do? Pop this guy on here. One of these black beads. 
this one, and this heart. Alright, so 18 gauge wire was too thick for this. I will add it differently. I'll just do something else with it entirely. Ooh, maybe a ring. I don't know. Alright. Now let's make... A loop for stringing. No, I want it to go the other way. It's face opposite. We'll string it on the necklace using this loop. I'm just going to curve this around. All right, now let's attach our cut chain. This is gonna be super, super fun because I am going to need a whole bunch of this thinner gauge wire. I'm just gonna pull off about an arm's length. If I need more, I will pull off more. If I don't need as much, then that is gonna be just fine with me. All right. And I'm going to start up here, or actually, let's start here on this part. I'm going to take the smaller, shorter end of this and do like three wraps around my 18 gauge wire with my 24 gauge wire. So I can make sure that it is nice and secure. I'm just going to wrap up here a little a couple of times. to make sure that wire isn't going anywhere. Scooch that over there. All right, now it's time for me to start with my cup chain. I'm gonna hold the cup chain here. I'm gonna try and make sure that the, uh, as it gets wrapped, it's these are facing forward. Let's wrap between the first two gems. I'm gonna wrap right there between those two and then around this form. Pull it through. And this part is going to be a little bit tedious, but I think it will end up being worth it. Alright, so wrap it once, and then I'm going to move on to the space between the next two. And I don't know how much of this I need, so I haven't cut the cup chain yet. I'll do it after I get this wrapped on here. Come on, buddy. This is going to be one of those go slowly and carefully moments. And that is, so yeah, that's, that's attaching. I'm so pleased. Um, yes, that one. Let's move on to the next. Right there. Between those two. There is enough room in between each of these rhinestones in the cup chain. Oh, there we go. 
for the wire to fit comfortably. Um, I would not suggest doing this with thicker wire. I don't think it would work as well with like 22 gauge. Um, 26 or 28 gauge would work great too. is kind of going everywhere. That's okay. I expected there to be some chain and wire wrangling involved in this while well, my cup chain is getting caught or my wire is getting caught on things under my desk. The cup chain is trying to slide off of my desk and I'm trying to keep it all in front of the camera. See, I've been pinching it while I've been doing it. That's just going to help it stay where I want it to be. It's grabbing onto my leg. Sorry, but we are not that kind of friends. Wire. is that. Yeah, you, you probably do not need as much wire as I pulled off. Um, maybe half of that. Okay, now we're going in another direction. I'll just go up over the top with that. Some other things you could do with this shoe shape, if you wanted to, would be to get some red seed beads or something, and then um, maybe wire wrap within the frame. That would be a really fun thing to do to make it into a ruby slipper. If you didn't feel like doing this, there's other options. finessing to get it to bend right around this corner. All right, it's good to know. Apparently cup chain is not as flexible as I thought it would be. Ugh. There we go. Now I'm going to skip this one right there. Actually, no, let's do that one. Let's get that on there good. Um, I'm just having to kind of bend the cup chain itself right there. It's getting wire wrapped, so it's not going to matter that I'm affecting the strength of the chain by bending it weird ways. That part won't matter. Alright guys, 
guys. Let's turn this this way. I love it so much already. So, yes, I understand this is probably tedious to watch. You can fast forward if you want. But I just wanted to get all of this filmed in one go without having to stop and start or do some editing. looks like a shoe right it's the heel the heel makes it look like a shoe rather than um I don't know a cucumber <laughs> or maybe an eggplant or something like that So don't forget the heel when you when you make your own. If you decide to do that. Yeah, I really like being able to draw out a template for a wire shape. If I'm doing something that's not like a normal circle or something like that. is um, really way too long to mess with, so I'm just going to cut off some of that. Wait, wait, wait. Am I skipping that part? No. Let's get in there between those two. There we go. That's the way I want it to go. Oh, yes. This will be much easier. Without that going everywhere. I'm just turning the cup chain so that it's facing the same direction as the rest of it. going to be another sharp bend in our cup chain. And you know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to go ahead and cut the cup chain right here. Just this little space between them. And then I think it's just going to be like two of these here. Okay, so cut those two. And wrap right between them. Oh, 
It's because we've got the right angle bends. do this actually twice just to make sure that it's on there well well and good and bring that around here to get ready to wrap for this next little run up here it's gonna be maybe three or four of these guys Oof, this part is awkward. That's okay. Okay. I'm holding, pinching with my thumb while I'm pulling on the wire to get it to fit. Right there. Okay, now the next one over. Okay, one more. Right there. Right between those two. Now I'm going to snip off this extra cup chain there. I'm just going to wrap this one more time just for security. And then I'm going to wrap around here. I'm going to wrap this beginning chain one more time, just right here at the top. Right there. All right, and then I'm gonna go up here. Just tighten things up. Ah, Ruby slipper. There we go. Let me get my end tucked in here. And then we can lay out our beads for stringing the rest of the Dorothy. There we go. All right, let's get those guys out of the way. Whew, that was a lot of fun. So now I've got my ruby slipper. Let's start planning the rest of these. I think we're gonna want Maybe these two right here next to that. Let's get these rondelles out here. Um, let's get the white rondelles. These cones. Then, um, some spacers, some of these other beads. Right, I'm just dividing these rest of these beads in half so that I can plan out one side and make sure that I have enough beads for the other side. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, and I've got an extra one of these somehow.
All right. That works. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. That's one, two, three. One, two, three. Perfect. All right. So we'll just plan it out from here. And then, however, this works. I think the next thing I want is another of these and a heart. Because there's no place like home. Black and white, because she starts out her journey in her black and white era. And then the twister comes along. Slippers, white, another one of these. I'm going to be using these between anything. No, blue, red, and then white, and then. Bracket those two. Blue and red and white. What? do this one actually closer to here next to those Wait, where are, th where are these guys going to fit, fit? Oh, here we go. How about this? I'm going to put you here. And then that there. Okay, yes. It's gonna have that on that side. And then this is gonna have this guy here. And now we're gonna have the blue and red and white. And this guy. the blue and red and white and this guy now let's just finish
finish up with what we've got left. We've got extras of those. Why don't I add them in here somewhere? good a good stringing order for my Dorothy guys let's try it all right so I'm just gonna leave this on the spool and start stringing from this end and then when I get halfway through it I'll check for length and if I like how it looks and I like the length and then I'll cut off the other end and start stringing in the same order, but in the opposite direction from that side. So let's find out if we like this. Okay, so this hole doesn't go all the way through. It does. It's just not going through for that guy. I see. That won't go through either. There is a blockage in the hole. Might be able to wiggle this through. <sighs> got it, got it, got it. All right. Because I could see daylight on the other side, and there's a little bit of a stain on it, too. That's okay. Because, you know, working on a farm. Pretty Gingham dress is probably going to get a few stains, especially if you are trying to balance on a fence and fall straight into the pigsty. You're going to end up with a little stain on your Pretty Gingham dress. It's just what happens. It's farm life. Am I right? Oh, yes, pretty. Pretty. So that will be one half of the necklace. Let me double check the size and see if I need to add some beads along the back end here. Oh, nope, that's going to be perfect for me. I do like a shorter necklace. If you like longer necklaces, you'll want to add some beads along the backside. Um, don't know what beads you'd add, but you can definitely do that. So let's get 
this strung. I'm going to do it in the same order that I've got it laid out here. And I'm probably going to forget something and do it differently, so please yell at me through the screen if you can. It helps. <laughs> Ah, uh, loving it so far. All right, let's see if this will go through without any finessing, and it does. Be beautiful. So it looks like it was just that one. It just had a little bump on the mid in these, on the inside of it. If I looked through the hole, I could see daylight on the other side. So I knew I could get through it. It just was going in at a weird angle and not really working right. Definitely happens. All right, let's get this guy on here. So like I said, this is part one of the series. I'm going to be doing a Glinda necklace and an Elphaba necklace. Um, we're going to be pulling things from some of the supporting characters. Uh, bead mixes and strands like these hearts came from, um, I think it was from the Cowardly Lion one? No. It was from whichever one wanted a heart. It came from that strand. Um, but they're red and they go with the, the slippers and, you know, Dorothy wanted to get back home where everybody that she loved was. So I think heart works. For that. And we're probably going to be pulling some metals from the rest of the Tin Man one for Glinda. Definitely, definitely feels like Dorothy. Wait. Is this the same? Do, 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 do. one and then that. I think I might have one extra black bead. Oh, because I used that black bead down there. So I'm going to need to take that one off, I think, after I get this on there. Um, just to make it match, or because it's behind the neck, it doesn't really matter that much. Alright, so let me attach my clasp to this side, and then after I cut this strand, I can readjust my bead on that side. really like using this beading wire because I don't have to use a wire guardian on it. And I like using these crimps because I can use my magical crimper, which means I don't have to use a um, crimp cover. I'll show you why in just a minute. There we go. I'm just got my crimp on, and then I put on my clasp, and then I bent it back through the crimp. 
And then I'm going to take my crimper and crimp this with the magical crimper. It has a concavity in here that if you center it over a 2x2 two two crimp, it only works on 2x2 two two crimps. And it works best on 0.018 or 0.019 beading wire. This is 0.019, so it's perfect for it. What you want to do is give it a smush and it squeezes down just the corners of your crimp. Then if you turn it at a different angle, give it a smush. Turn it at a different angle, give it a smush. And just keep turning it at different angles and then giving it another smush. You'll feel it eventually um, stop resisting. And when it does that, it leaves you with this nice smooth little ball of crimp that's very strong. And that is why it is my favorite way of crimping. Because there's not a bunch of extra steps that I have to take. And you can cut right next to the crimp. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just sliding a couple of beads on to give me some space there. Let's slide my beads all the way down there to the other side. And cut this with enough space for crimping on that side. You can, you can adjust this if you need to make it look more shoe shaped if you want. There you go. And again, I like this wire because it's pretty durable. You don't need wire guardians. And I'm actually just going to use the loop of the wire to close this. I'm not going to add um, a uh, what is it called? The um, jump rings or, or closed rings or anything like that for that to jump onto on the end. Oh, you know what I almost forgot to do? Take off this extra black bead. There we go. That was, that was just an extra bead. Let's put this back on. And a crimp bead and then I'm going to bend this back and make a loop. I can always add a jump ring after the fact if I want to, after I've made my loop, since they open and close. All right, hey friend, let's go through. that down and I like to on the other side make sure that my beads aren't going to be too crowded so I'll curve my wire and then I also like to make sure that there's a little bit of space between my crimp and my last bead so I'll just use my fingernail and move that over that way the sides of my crimper can fit all the way around it so it's centered so it doesn't work as well if you don't center the crimp in your crimper. Just give it some smooshes. And then we're all crimped. And we have our Dorothy necklace. Alright, so stay tuned for parts two and three when I make more necklaces based on characters from the Wizard of Oz. All right. Um, I'm going to put links to the wire that I used, put links to my bead board, the tools that I used, um, links to Jesse James Beads, if you wanted to see about signing up there, and um, also have links to the other two videos in this series once they've been completed and uploaded. Happy beading! Bye!